Welcome back, Sugar Pie. We're going to talk about correlation. It's really important in crypto. It doesn't stay static. No matter what the liquidity is for crypto, it's something you've got to understand. You are going to have to interpret this in your own way. You're not going to get it perfect, but it's going to help you avoid disaster in the next crypto bear market when it does come. So liquidity events. Liquidity events are brutal. Liquidity event is 2022 stock market crashing. The Fed was hiking interest rates and you just, you can feel in everyone's minds, all the humans, they say, ah, I want US dollars. I need to repay my debt. What do they do? They grab every US dollar they can. They grab it out of the BTC USD pool. They grabbed it out of the hex USDC pool. They grabbed it out of stocks. They grabbed it everywhere. They're looking for that precious US dollar. So most things, you know, they're not correlated until you are. And yes, that's a kitchen knife emoji because it's going to stab you in the back. When you need your asset to fly on its own the most, it will let you down every time in markets. Why? Because everything is a fugazi. It's all printed currency. They've printed so much money that we are tied to the hip of the volatility of M2 money supply. And it's getting more and more like a bill over time. Like the volatility is going to get more and more and more. You're going to see this as time goes on with fiat currencies and stocks and stuff. They're going to have to print exponentially more money to plug the holes. So I have this nice cute chart for you because you're a baby doll, baby cake, sugar pie. Hex and Bitcoin for 450 days. It was a great experiment to see because... Um, Hex didn't have Bitcoin liquidity or Ethereum liquidity much in 2022, but it still got destroyed. It was only Hex USDC that was the primary pair, but didn't matter. As I said, the correlation that you hope doesn't exist goes out the window when little Jerry wakes up in the US of A with his little freckle face and he's hunched back and he's like, oh, oh I see a red candle. And he clicks sell and I saw it. Every single day, May and June of 22, every single day, Bitcoin and Ethereum, four-hour red candle, I'd watch. As soon as the four-hour would close the red candle, the Americans wake up or the Europeans wake up or the next round of Asian market participants wake up because that's a 24-hour cycle, right? We're going eight-hour rotations. So they'd wake up, poop the bed. They're like, ah, I see red, and they just click sell. So it didn't even matter matter that the liquidity wasn't completely tied to the markets, Bitcoin, Ethereum in 2022. It didn't matter. People get infected by the paper hand disease. You got to stay on Team Diamond Hands. That's in your best interest for long-term gains. So this is what I'm wishing for. Pulse Chain, we can't do the sky pump without Bitcoin and Ethereum breaking higher too. What does that mean? doesn't mean we can go 10, 20x. That's not a sky pump. A sky pump is when we make international headlines. It's when the number is so big they can't even fathom it anymore. That's the sky pump. We need Bitcoin and Ethereum higher. You know, I, I think psychologically, I've got, I think I've got a good feel on the market. I can use my nostrils and I can feel, I can smell what would excite people. Seeing Bitcoin with a four in front of it would be very strong for one's libido, I believe. Four in front of it. That's $40,000 plus. I'll take 30000 That's good enough. That's recovery zone. $30,000 Bitcoin plus, that's where everyone's like, okay, we're not going to zero. All right. We're not going to zero. That's like, you know, it's recovery. But the $40,000 zone, that's where everyone's like, ooh, I wonder what $50,000 feels like. You know, everyone's starting to get a bit excited there. And Ethereum, I think we need, for strong libido, $3,000 in front. That would really get everyone's gears going because that would mean most people are break even. The average volume trading zone is now around break even. That would really excite everyone. But until then, price and price sentiment. It's not specifically about the price. It's the price sentiment. It's how people feel when you get to that price. So don't forget this. Now, I did some very nice homework for you. Why? Of course, you're a sugar pie. 
and I found charts of Bitcoin and Ethereum correlation. So as a general rule, you got to know this. Correlations, they're not static. Correlations are one of the best trades you can do in the world, by the way, when you're trading because you're just following something. But, big but, they don't last forever and they change. Sometimes the market doesn't care about that thing you think it does. For example, a famous one, there are some months where Bitcoin just follows gold. It just literally starts correlating the gold for a month on like a five five minute time frame. It's crazy. In 2022, Bitcoin was following NASDAQ and S&P 500 to the T. So these these drift in and out. If you trade other currencies, you get to see some certain currencies will follow oil when there's an oil theme and then it goes out and then they start following. You know, I remember 2011, Japan had a tsunami and the earthquake. Um, yeah, everybody, everything was just following the Nikkei, the Nikkei index. Australian stock market was following the Japanese Nikkei, up, down, left, right, that's it, by the five-minute candles during that month. So these drift in and out. They're not static. And look at this. Bull markets and bear markets are obviously different in crypto. There's different correlations with how they behave. This is not just Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is crypto, everything in crypto. So let's start with the premise. Look at this. Ethereum, maybe you've heard of it coin, Ethereum was once considered to be unshackled from Bitcoin during the 2017 run. So you can go back and read about this. People thought, no, we're different. We're not a store of value. We do things differently. I wasn't around. I just read the comments and the evidence. I want you to have a look at this green. Do you see this green box, this pumpamental green box? This is the, the line is the correlation. So if it's a very high number, that means they're moving together. But if the correlation drops, it means something is disconnecting. And as you can see, during the bull market, this is 2017. This was when Ethereum went from $20 to $900 in this year. And then it bursted to $1,400 in January of 2018. So Ethereum went from $20 to $900. And Bitcoin went from $1,000 to $20,000. So they both went up, but look at this. They didn't go up exactly in tandem, but they both went up together. So look at the correlation just absolutely got destroyed. That was this Ethereum moving by itself. Interesting though, the bear market that was before it, look at this. Look how tight they were. Bitcoin and Ethereum just linked. Nothing can escape the wrath of Bitcoin. I am looking forward to that day, but for now, nothing escapes the wrath of Bitcoin. Devil's advocate. There are 50,000 coins, man. Don't bring me those three coins that escaped the wrath of Bitcoin. Yes. In two, I already know them. Okay. In 2019 and 18, you, Chainlink and BNB disconnected from everything. They were not correlated to Bitcoin. Congratulations. Wow. We got two coins out of 40,000. 99.9% tied to the hip of Bitcoin. In our recent market, we had sometimes GMX was moving by itself for a strong time, some other random coins. That don't really matter, man. 99.9%. You're tied to the hip. So the correlation of Ethereum and Bitcoin went down during the bull, and then it rises again during the bear, and then you linked again. It's actually what it is today. That's the funny part. It actually is still in this today. This is why someone, a couple of you asked me, hey, man, isn't your Ethereum target much higher, and why? And I said, well, the end of ETH BTC, the end of it, did not come, in my opinion, because I want you to have a look at this. This is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. I want to put it on a log. You can see the correlation broke down. This is it. This is the 2017 mark. The correlation broke down because Ethereum went on a nuclear run. But what we saw here was a correlation still here. So to me, I know this is the scariest hold of all time, but how I interpret it is the crypto market did not have a fulfilling, orgasmic alt season. It did not happen. We started a little pre-drinks party where you're having your cute little drinks and your orange juice. Maybe you've had one shot, maximum one shot. That's it. You barely started drinking. The main event has not happened. That's my opinion. Could be wrong. But my exit symbol, my exit signal, since I came in during this time, my exit has always been a period of time. If Ethereum can disconnect from Bitcoin in a meaningful way like this, now I know that the end is near. That's me. That's personally why I have not felt any danger with altcoins in this market because I never went euphoric. 
They, I know you're going to look at me like, what do you mean you didn't go euphoric? I saw JPEGs going at $20,000, $150,000. I go, yes. Leave those people aside. Our strong growing network effects, for the most part, the large caps, they didn't go as euphoric anywhere near as what happened before. The market could be changing, but I think it's also markets kind of realizing we don't have to go to zero, man. Bitcoin doesn't do everything for us. So the, everyone's slowly trying to figure that out, and they are figuring it out. So at the end of the day, right, I even reconstructed this hex and Bitcoin chart to show you even on a log chart, you can see them following. So on a log chart, right, you can see them following. So don't forget, man, just don't forget this. During crypto bear markets, correlation spike to one. Are we still in a bear market? Is Bitcoin under $69,000? Yes. Okay. We're in a bear market. This is what's going to happen. You're going to see a lot of rinsing and washing out, three steps forward, two steps back. And I promise you, you might find a few people out there might get tilted when you say that the correlations are high. Why? I want you to know why. why? Look, look, you are holding bags. You have every interest in your mind to believe that this time is different and that you are not correlated to Bitcoin. Everyone wants to believe that. That's the hopium talk. Why? Do, how do I know this? Because I want to believe it too. I want to believe my bags that I hold have nothing to do with Bitcoin because that actually, it says to other people, we are unshackled. We are, you know, that wild dog. We're not even on a leash anymore. We are so wild and eccentric and thrilling. We can do backflips. We can go anywhere. Uncontrollable. We can rally at any time. That's hopium talk. Okay. That's what we want. What's the truth? The truth is Bitcoin takes a bit of a pooper. We'll take a pooper. Bitcoin takes a bit of a pooper. We'll continue taking a pooper and we'll follow and we'll follow and we'll follow even more. Bitcoin starts coming out of the toilet. We'll come out of the toilet a bit faster. Then Bitcoin stops. We come back. That's the unfortunate reality. In a bull market, we hope we unshackle ASAP, but you just got to understand this, right? Can you trade this? No, you can't. But I just want you to understand how to use this to your advantage. Just know that, look, at the end of the day, expectations matters the most. It's not 2024. It's not 2025. Bitcoin is under $69,000. It's not about the liquidity in the pool and what you think the code does and if you think the fundamentals are different. doesn't matter. All that matters is what goes on in the minds of everyone holding the coins around you. That's what matters. You're never going to know completely, but you can, if you sit out there, you listen carefully, you fo follow me on Twitter, like, subscribe, bell button all, I can share with you just some insights of what I am feeling, what's coming my way. People are worried about, you know, issue A, B, A, B, C. Maybe it's Binance. Maybe it's Bitcoin. Maybe it's exchanges. Maybe Ethereum's doing something. You can feel it and we'll start following it. But eventually, long-term fundamentals start kicking in and you start grinding up to where they think fair value is. So, of course, yes, we want to believe in a decoupling. Of course, we want to believe it. Yeah, man, I want my coin to do a 5X and Bitcoin not to move. Please. Please do that, but it's not up to me. It's up to the market. So you already know what time it is, baby dolls. These correlations, they're short-term. They don't last forever. They're done in the past. Now the million-dollar question is, how tight do you think the correlation will be going forward? It depends how bullish you are. If you were to put a gun on my head and say, okay, what's happened in the past? Well, I'll let you know. For 99.9% .9 of coins that disconnect, and their correlation breaks. I want you to know, like this period, okay, I'm gonna change the color here. They're only able to disconnect when Bitcoin is near breaking its all time high. That's most of the time, most coins. Now, of course, everyone's gonna say, my coin's different, my community's different, we got better code, better community, things are different. Yes. I'm gonna say, keep your posture straight. I'm sitting on a squeaky chair, hope you are too. Your elbows, they're looking mighty pointy. Remember, we all want to be told our community is different. We all want to believe we are the chosen ones. We are going to disconnect. We are going to decouple. We're going to flip the next guy. We're going to do it. Of course, that's what we want. But statistically, based off thousands and thousands of coins, it don't happen it happens rare, very rare. And here's another kicker. The correlation, 
if you are going to disconnect, it only happens in your first cycle. So as a coin moves to second cycle plus, it starts hugging Bitcoin exponentially tighter. So if you notice, look what happened here in ETH BTC, right? In ETH BTC, tighter, much tighter. Same as Tron, same as XRP, same as Litecoin. All these coins that become second and third cycle, they just become gravitated, magneted, magneted towards Bitcoin's liquidity. So if you're going to disconnect, you better be in the first cycle. So yeah, it would be nice if Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Poor Pleb, Hedron, Icosa, any of the juicy juices, it'd be great if they have a big burst of disconnection. That would be fantastic. But on average, for some reason, the liquidity people and how they move it, even if there's no liquidity in the pool, as a coin stays older and older, it starts to kind of follow Bitcoin. So, you know, never know. Maybe one day this works in our advantage because Bitcoin's price is so high and you are able to kind of like hug itself around the city and act like a act in its little orbit. Maybe that's the reason why a lot of these coins survive like XRP. And specifically what I'm looking at when I'm when I'm thinking of this would be like XRP BTC chart. You know, very interesting. You know, the um, in the court case, the SEC said that uh, Ripple is determining the price of XRP. And XRP's defense was the XRP BTC chart. That's right. They used this chart. So I can change it here to candles. So it's the same chart. And they said, no, no, no. No, sir. Ripple, the company, has nothing to do with XRP's price. In fact, what's actually explaining the price is Bitcoin. So that was their defense. I don't know if the judge believes it. He should. I mean, look at this chart. Look at this chart. We've gone, no, XRP, you have not. Look, just please know, you haven't been rewarded for 10 years, by the way. Yes, I'm not making this up. This is not anything. I'm just letting you know. Oh, my God. Yes. All right. 118 months. Congratulations. 120 months. 10, 10 years, 3,600 days. Wow. That's a long time. You have, I'm sorry, this is the truth. Ripple has added no value for you. Okay. Don't shoot the messenger. Please put your gun down. Put your gun down. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad. Well, it kind of is bad. Look, um, this is the chart, man. The chart says Ripple has been dumping on you for 10 years and they have added no value. If they were adding value, your chart would look differently. Your chart would look like this, like that. And then over time, there might be a higher base, your XRP BTC chart, and you might go sideways like that. That's what it would look like. It hasn't. You got to ask yourself why, why? You know, this is the XRP USD chart I'm going to show you on a log. I'm going to be fair. This is what the XRP BTC chart should look like, but it doesn't. This is only the US dollar price. This is what it should look like. You see how? There's just a higher base. There's a new floor and it won't go below there. But that's not what we see, friends. That's not what we see. You know what we see? We see this. So think about this. Correlations going forward. The whole crypto industry moves together in the bear market. Only in the bull market do the correlations start to disconnect. You don't know exactly what's coming next. That's why at the end of the day, you know the formula. you got to buy. You've got to hodl. You have diamond hands, buy in the depression, sell in the euphoria, call dad and then call mum, tell him you love him.